Welcome to the United States Air Force Mars uh, program. This uh, Mars uh, lecture is about the military affiliate uh, radio system and uh, my name is Dr. Roger Hughes. Uh, I'm the United States Air Force Region 9 Mars uh, Training Director and I'd certainly like to uh, give this as a very rapid course because you can go through the slides by video and what we're going to do uh, today is to really look at the overview of what is Mars. Well Mars as I mentioned is the military affiliate radio system and there are a whole load of uh, different um, people involved uh, everybody from Army, Navy and Air Force and the origination of the Mars program was started by the Army back in 1925 and as basically as an amateur affiliate uh, radio service and the Mars program was actually formed in 1948 uh, with separate uh, versions for the Army and the Air Force which was formed at that time and then Navy Marine Corps also formed their own version of Mars back in 1962. Now historically this used to deal with Mars grams and phone calls to uh, services. <clears throat> the more modern trend has been to look at uh, emergency uh, support now, Army Mars is headquartered at uh, Fort uh, Huachuca in Arizona, and it's assigned to headquarters U.S. Army, um, and it's a direct report to the Chief's, uh, Army Chief's uh, Information Officer. All Army Mars call signs begin with the call letters uh, Alpha Alpha. With regard to Air Force Mars. Um, Air Force Mars is located at Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. Um, there's contact details and address information there. Uh, the important thing to note is that all Air Force Mars call signs begin with the um, three-letter combination of AFA, in other words, Alpha Foxtrot Alpha, and then a number where the number is the region number. And there are currently uh, 10 regions which actually coincide nowadays with the FEMA regions, uh, region 10 having the designated digit of zero. If we look at the Navy Marine Corps Mars, um, they're actually over in Williamsburg, Virginia, and all Navy Mars call signs are quite interesting in the sense that they all begin with the same combination of digits, the NNN zero. Um, which is why when Navy Mars personnel are talking between one another, they often uh, eliminate the NNN zero and just use the suffix letters. That can't be done when dealing with um, communicating with other services because the full call sign is needed. Now it might be interesting to look at um, where Mars is currently in the uh, 21st century. So a in 2008, a tri-service um, Mars agreement was reached between um, Air Force, Army and uh, Marine Corps and all services now have um, common procedures. Now in January 2009, there was an alignment with FEMA regions. Uh, the regions for Mars were previously dictated by various amounts of uh, radio propagation and what they've now done is to align the region numbers with the FEMA region so that as far as support is concerned it becomes a much easier matter to provide support uh, when you're dealing with like numbered regions uh, so that you know where appropriate support can come from. Now currently there's also a concept of phone patch um, to ships that is used in terms of the Navy Marine Corps Mars. And there's also phone patch to aeroplanes um, which is used in Air Force Mars. And that is used quite significantly with different planes wanting to make um, communication. Now the final aspect is emergency communication support and this is where Mars can give a great uh, benefit um, to society.
Now, current Mars customers, if we look at current Mars customers, are a whole variety of different things. They include the Department of Defense, Department of the Army, Department of the Navy, um, both Navy and US Marine Corps, that is, Department of the Air Force, US Coast Guard, uh, Department of State, uh, National Disaster Medical Service, uh, Department of Homeland Security, both FEMA and the uh, TSA, as well as there's the National Communication System, uh, which includes shares, as, uh, as well as offer, we offer support as well to state agencies, uh, local emergency response agencies, and certain private agencies such as the uh, American Red Cross. Now let's look at types of membership within Mars. There are actually five types of membership, and the one I'm going to be talking about in this uh, talk is really the radio operator who's an individual member. Naturally, there can be military unit memberships and club station members, but it's the individual member that's um, key to what we want people to be able to operate with. Now, there are some restrictions. Any Mars member can only be a member of one Mars program at a time. They can only be Army, Air Force or Navy Marine Corps. And normally military commands um, will always affiliate with their sponsoring service Mars. So if you're actually an officer or um, a serviceman in the Army, you would naturally join the Army Mars service. If you're in the Air Force, you would naturally join the Air Force Mars service. Unless, of course, you're operating in an area where only one Mars service is authorised, then you could join an alternate um, Mars uh, service. Now, how can someone become a member of Mars? You have to be 18 years old. You've got to be a US citizen uh, or permanent resident. And you must hold a current amateur licence issued by the Federal Communications Commission. Ideally, you should also have uh, digital capability because a lot of emergency traffic is typically passed via digital means. And you must be able to operate on HF frequencies. Now, here I'm mentioning you send the request for application forms to your appropriate headquarters. I've just listed the um, Air Force Mars address there. Um, but naturally, if you wish to join one of the other Mars services, you can send your application to the appropriate address. You then submit the application, and um, the other requirement is that once you do pass training, you have to do a minimum of 12 hours of on-air participation um, per quarter. Now, I mentioned a little bit earlier about the new reorganization. Um, Mars region alignment with FEMA. Um, the idea is to really simplify intra-agency support and to clarify communication. Let's have a look at what the FEMA regions, um, or sorry, what the old um, Air Force regions looked like um, back in the old map. We can see that basically region 6 used to encompass California, Nevada, Arizona and New Mexico and um, Region 8 was basically Hawaii. Now Region 7 in the old system was historically was Europe. Um, now in terms of FEMA the numbering was quite different and so back in January um, 2009 we changed to map everything out to equate to the FEMA numbering of regions so that we became in California we became part of region 9 and what we saw was that uh, New Mexico then became part of the new region 6 and we also as a part of region 9 have now acquired uh, uh, Hawaii as well as Guam.